Okay, welcome to the continuation of the tutorial. So now let's move to the machine stage. So we have the two geometers here, the same molder, a space clean. So let me so let's generate the mesh, okay? So I will do it with both geometers, but nothing changed, okay? But just to show you. So let me drag here the mesh, put it here, and now double click here. Remember in the properties, you can see the name of the files, the directory where everything is located. Okay, so let me double click here. It will launch uh, uh, the mesh and application. It will import the same molar geometry. And then I'm going to throw in some parameters. Now to do the mesh is you want to reproduce my previous results just open here, okay? Open the, the previous cases and you, you can reproduce the mesh, okay? So here I will put some values just to get a mesh, okay? So at this point, see that it's important geometry. This is what you have, okay? So we have it here. Let me orient here. So that here, remember, CFD here and now for instance you can control the global parameters let me put 0.1 see that that large circle represents the largest cell and that means sir now a method select everything and now choose your method quads or triangles so let's do quadrilateral dominant and let me generate a mesh so see that you have this nice could be much nicer adding boundary layer finer mesh okay adding more smaller cells here so let's do that so i will choose here instead of quad let me choose i prefer to have triangles so remember in theory they will give you the same solution for some reason i prefer triangles by the way let me go back here with with this one some people may be interested in creating all these structure type meshes and in this case it still is a simple geometry but it may be very difficult because you need to to identify what what faces or edges surfaces are, are, are sweepable or you can convert into a structure mesh. So for instance, this edge, you can sweep this edge, but up to this location. Then here you see that you have another mesh. So here you will need to sweep this one from here to here. And then this common edge between these two blocks, the one that you will have here, you will have here a block, a meshing block. So just let me to illustrate that better. Here, you will have here so from here to here you can sweep a mesh with no problem but then here you have mismatch you are going to have mismatch meshes so here you need to sweep from here and you can do something interior like this and then you will need to match this edge between the two meshes and the same here then from here you can sweep to here so see that this is tricky and then when you have more complicated geometries since since get more, more more difficult so this is why i don't like to use these meshes, okay, structure meshes, but yeah, you, you can get better quality meshes and probably can accelerate the solution, but honestly, just following some good st standard practices, there is no difference between tetra and quads or between triangles and quad sets, okay? So for, for our proposals, let's use triangles, okay? Generate, we have this. So let's say that I'm happy with the dimension here in the core, but here the cells are rather large. So here I don't have access to, to, to this small surface here, okay? But you could do it if you do it at the geometry generation time you, uh, a step, you can generate different domains here, but that is tricky. But what we can do here is control the edge refinement. So see that, select the edge, select these three edges, Press control, multiple selection, and let me insert a sizing in that selection. And I want to have here something about 0, 0.0. Let me put two. Generate. And voila, you have that con that sizing here. But see that it's growing from a small to larger cell. So also you can control the growth rate. Remember that you have it here. So as you put here a small value, that will do the trick. So pay attention here, how these small cells are going to propagate here, okay? See that they propagated here, as because you changed this. So we have this, okay? We control that one, and the next step is just to add the boundary layer. So you go here, insert, and inflation, select everything, select the edges, okay? so. Here, 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 
here, here, here, here, here, and here. I don't want to add in here in this one, so I, that's why I didn't select that. And let me put six. This method is okay. But for instance, you have a target Y plus and you know your system Reynolds number, remember the estimates, and then you can use this method. First, there is sickness and put that sickness there. Okay, it's up to you, you have different choices. I will put this here. And voila, we have the mesh. Nice mesh, everything seems to be okay. And remember when we, cre we created the name selections at the geometry. So see here that those name selections exist here. Okay, so also you can erase then or rename. Okay, so I like to do it at mesh in time, but you can use you can do it also as well when you generate your geometry. I have no particular reason why I like to do that. Okay, but it's up to you. Uh, also remember that the repair overlapping name selections you have the option here. So always check this one because if you have overlapping patches, that would be a problem. So for instance, see that I will create a new name selection. And those edges are already repeated. Okay, so let me call it like this. So if I go here, repair, see that it's going to tell you these are the, <clears throat> the name selection. Okay, so see, this is the one that is overlapping and this is the wall repair. Okay, so what it's doing is splitting, it's splitting the, the, those faces. So delete this one. Okay, see that you have this there. You can also delete it. Okay, and here you have your individual patches. Okay, so it's the one you can create a group for walls, but Fluent will put all those groups that you didn't put in name selections as a default patch. Okay, it's up to you how to control everything. So I think we're okay here with this mesh. Okay, so for for instance, I can you can go. Let me add this sizing in the whole domain also. So let me go in the whole domain and let me put 0.05. Okay, so let me control also. You could control that one using the global or the sizing. So see that you have this, which is much, much size, nicer, okay? So this is our mesh. So now let's move to, to, to generate pretty much the same, but using this geometry. So the steps are already the same, okay? So see the drag and drop there, double click. By the way, also I could have duplicate this one and then link this geometry to this setup that you have here. But the problem is that the, the name of the surfaces probably are different. You have different name selections. So that could, could create a, a, a problem when transferring the setup. So it's better to, to have a, an empty case and you know, uh, a new case and you know this, uh, your setup. So it's not a big deal. Okay, so while important is yes, this is it's important in geometry, transferring everything you have it here. Okay, so voila. So at this point, you do the same as the previous case. So let me do it here. Now I will go a little bit faster. So let me put here the method. So let there apply. I want to use triangle. Let me add here the sizing there. Uh, the size is 0 0.05. Let me add another sizing that I'm going to add uh, here, here, and here. Okay, so that one will be, I don't know, 0 0.01. Let me create, change this growth rate, and let me add the boundary layer. So, so that everything. And then, so here, remember that we created in a space cleanse this group wall. So here you can select in inflation, you can, instead of selecting again the geometry, you have that name selection and you have your name selection there. So let me put here six and generate. Again, all the name selections that you created in Space cleans you have it here. So while well, uh, you have this mesh, so this one is fine. It remain it shows, it shows smaller values here, but pretty much this is the workflow. Okay, so now <clears throat> in the next uh, next tutorial. Uh, this, so we finished this tutorial, tutorial three. We move to tutorial four. We're going to do pretty much the same in three D. So I guess you have an idea of all these selections. So probably I want to spend much time explaining here. So now that you have the geometry. So remember here in mesh, you can also statistic, you, you know, the number of cells that you have. Uh, let me close here and see that you have the two meshes. Okay. Save the project 
every now and then and now you can convert the meshes okay so as you put here see the lighting means that requires conversion from ANSYS measure to fluent okay and see here that this one is telling you that in sys1 directory name sys1 you have that information so let me go workbench working here in test and you will see here sys1 and here you're going to have everything see that you have the mesh there so if you want to work outside the <clears throat> the workbench this is the way i recommend you okay do the geometry meshing here and then when working fluent just get out of the workbench and work a standalone fluent it's, it's better use less memory okay and you need to deal with all this stuff that is saving a lot of information so and let me convert this one as well so at this point we have the two meshes okay so in the next video we're going to set up the case so any of these cases so it's up to you okay so we're going to set up a, a case so here also you go back to the problem definition and we have all <clears throat> all the case definition okay so i think safe this is all see you in the next video bye